Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Optic Scumpy, here today, bringing you my Call of Duty Vanguard setting video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this one. It's very, very important to have your settings as good as you can before you obviously hop into the game. You want to make sure that everything's optimized so you don't have to ever, ever worry about it again. And you can just focus on playing and improving. I know, settings can be confusing, but they are pretty intuitive. I do like how Call of Duty has added that now... Whenever you're going through your settings, at least it tells you what every single thing does. You know, you, back in the, I, they'll, they'll be putting things on the game, and I'm, I don't even know what that is, brother. Like, you know, I don't even care what that is. But now they actually give you a little bit of a detailed thing in the game, which is nice. So let's start walking through. So starting, obviously, keyboard and mouse, not my thing. So completely skipping that section. Let's start with display. You got to have full screen. I mean, if you're not playing on full screen, you might notice a couple choppy, uh, choppy moments. Make sure you're on full screen. 1920 by 1080. I, people play on different reses. Uh, it's my monitor. Refresh rate, refresh rate 240. Make sure that you're playing on the right refresh rate. Um, also, go into your, you know, graphics card control panel and make sure you're on the highest refresh rate that you can possibly be. Um, trust me, you'd be surprised how many people don't do that and they're not getting the best frames that they can possibly be getting. V-Sync off. You want V-Sync off. This will add controller input delay. You do not want that. It's one of the worst things that you can have. If you're playing on controller, take it off. Frame rates, I put mine on custom. 250 is about all that I really need because 240 hertz is my max. That's all I really care about. Uh, aspect ratio automatic. Uh, brightness 53 is what I usually play on. Display 2-2. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Um, and yeah, all this stuff. Make sure your, your graphics card is the right one. Now, so you're, this is where we get into the beefy stuff, the real substance of your settings. This is going to basically dictate all of your graphic settings and how your game looks. So set it on custom. Render resolution. Make sure you're on 100. Um, if you're not on 100, your game is going to look very, very chop or not choppy, just blurry. Um, in Warzone, this resets a lot. Uh, whenever you close the game or there's an update, it'll just randomly reset. So make sure that this is at 100 at all times. Um, also, I mean, if you're at a higher uh, resolution, I believe you have to turn it up. But if you're on 1920 by 1080, make sure it's on 100. Uh, text resolutions, the detail level in, of environmental textures. I just have this on medium. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, medium seems to be all right. Also, if you see the effect on the VRAM and it's high, you can obviously go in and mess with your own settings and stuff. Uh, usually things that are on low, you can have a little bit more freedom with because it's not taking up as much as your, your RAM, VRAM usage. Um, so just throwing that, that, that out there. If you do want to tweak the settings a little bit based off of that, uh, go for it. But next, uh, anisotropic filter. The detail level of surfaces when viewed at an angle. I don't, <laughs> medium. I don't know what that means. Particle level. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, just like if there's particles, if there's embers coming off of the fire, stuff like that. Um, I have this on medium and high because it's uh, effect on VRAM. Actually, I'm going to set that to low. I have that on low. Um, bullet impacts and sprays. I have this on just so you can see the impact and sprays of bullets on surfaces. Uh, this is beneficial if you're trying to test out wall bank spots, I feel like. You can actually see where your bullets are hitting if you do want to see if you can wall bank certain things. Shader quality, the intensity of the lighting treatment on some surfaces. Low. I mean, don't really care about that. Tessellation off subdivisions of objects and surfaces for improved render. Yeah, I don't care about the rocks on the ground, brother. Level of detail, distance range. Uh, I have this on standard. So it sets the distance at which surrounding objects switch from their nearby level. Their distance, longer the range, the further the... So yeah, don't really care about that. I mean, as long as I can see them in a decent quality, it's fine. I mean, nearby level, distant level, both on low. Flutter draw distance low. I could care about the. I could care less about the small ground elements. Uh, this is for fog, clouds, low. Don't care. Um, off for the screen space shadows. Uh, level detail level of shadows and the view. I mean, you know, I'm not looking out into the distance in this game. I'm I'm trying to get up in their face and absolutely smoke people. Uh, shadow map resolution. The detail level of shadows. I have this on medium because it is important to be able to differentiate shadows on this game. Um, shadows can be beneficial if you are uh, seeing somebody coming through a doorway. So it's just nicer to have the ones on the map uh, more visible. So I have this on medium. They don't have to be on high or very high, I don't think, or ultra. Um, I have this one on medium. 
so I can tell the difference. Uh, shadow cascades, don't care. Distant sunlight shadows. The cache sun shadows. Uh, sunlight shadows will be stored on the cache. Speed up rendering for future frames. Now, all of this stuff, shadow and lighting stuff, I pretty much have on basically all lower off, honestly. Um, cache spot shadows off. Spot cache shadows. Set the cache size of spot. Like, I don't even know what that means. Spot shadow quality. Set the detail level of spot light shadows. Don't care. Particle lighting. I honestly have this on medium just because I do think the particle lighting in this game is pretty cool. Um, I mean, you can see here with like a, a smoking barrel or I just really like the embers of the fire and stuff. I think it's cool to see. Ambient occlusion. Soft shadows intersecting with each other to create depth. Off. Screen space off. Um, this is where stuff gets a little more interesting. The post-processing. So I have this stuff off. Um highest possible frame rate at maximum graphic settings i don't play at the maximum graphic settings so i have this off um the fidelity super resolution i have off this i have on this actually this specific setting if you do not have this on i would turn it on um when i turn this on the sharpness of my game was very very noticeable it literally made me feel like i was playing a different game whenever i turn this on and set it to one so this is one of the important settings. Turn it on if you don't have it on. And set it to one. Tr just trust me. Anti-aliasing, filmic SMA two times. Smooths out jagged edges. Uh, I don't really like how... If it's not like... Like smoothed off. I like the jagged cuts. Depth of field off. Um, don't really care about that. So yeah. There are the graphics. Boom. Hope they, uh, hopefully that helped. Apply. Uh, field of view. I play on 100. Oh, also on my color customization... Uh, I put my enemy color all the way to the far left. It just makes me be able to differentiate things easier. Uh, everything else I kept on default, but enemy color, I did move one down to the left to make it really visible when there's an enemy. Field of view, 105. Camera movement. This is another important one. Turn it to 50. It uh, adjusts the intensity of camera shake. Yeah, turn it down. Holy cow. There's enough screen shake in this game already. You don't want more. Turn it to the least. Just trust me. World motion blur and weapon motion blur both off. Don't like that. Uh, video reflex low latency. I actually should have this on plus boost. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, so I was messing up there. Low latency mode is now enabled and optimizing system latency. GPU clock frequencies are kept high in CPU bound cases. Reduce latency but will increase GPU power draw. I have that on. I don't. Can't. All right, audio. Uh, this stuff's all pretty straightforward and all pretty much um, user preference. I have mine on 80. Just because it sounds better on my stream. Uh, music volume I have off, even though I do kind of like the music in this game. Uh, I do have it off. Uh, dialogue volume at 100. Sound effect volume at 100. Mute game off. Hit markers, I like classic. So you can have Vanguard or classic. I like classic. Uh, audio mode I have on headphones. I don't know why they took uh, out high boost and low boost and all of those different uh, audio mixes. Uh, but I'm on headphones for this game. Hill streak music on. I don't even know what that means. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, and then all this stuff is, you know, preference with your microphone and stuff like that. Next, interface. Um, default, off. Subtitles, default. Because I don't even have them on. Text chat, all. Uh, I do have text chat on. I don't have my, I have my profanity filter on because I'm a good boy. Uh, FPS is the only thing that I show. Interface is pretty straightforward. I mean, my horizontal. This is actually something that you can change, your HUD. Uh, I should probably... Set, I'm going to set mine lower. So basically, this pushes in the minimap. Just basically your HUD. It pushes it in closer to the center of your screen. So if you like to look at your minimap and stuff like that, this is beneficial because it reduces the distance that you're looking at the center of your screen to the outer HUD bounds. I have square, minimap on... All this stuff on crosshair bobbing. Make sure you have that off. What the hell? That I don't. I can't even believe that's a setting. <laughs> Your crosshair's just going all over the place, just bouncing up and down, just going crazy. Um, next controller six. I play on six six one time. Um, again, this is all pretty much preference. I play default flipped, and there's a couple other things that we're gonna get into. So the gameplay section is gonna be more important. I do play on dynamic. Um. I mean, all of this stuff, I didn't even touch, honestly. Uh, I really didn't touch any of this stuff. Oh, I did touch this stuff, though. This is actually important. So the dead zones on your controller. I put my left stick uh, dead zone on zero uh, to make it easier to be able to sprint and stuff like that. And then I put my right stick on four for my minimums. So this basically, the dead zone 
is essentially your controller's sensitivity uh, to like your stick rotating inside of the dead zone. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, this will just make your controller feel more responsive, I would say. And then if you also haven't overclocked your controller, that's very, very important. Uh, let me actually know if you guys would want a tutorial on how to overclock your controller. Because uh, I know a lot of people don't know how to do that. And it is very crucial if you're playing on PC with a controller. Um, but yeah, I have that. And then make sure your maximum inputs on both are on 100. Uh, if you do get stick drift, you can move these. So if you get stick drift, you know, a lot of... Basically, the range people play on on their right stick is from 3 to 5. So you can go to 3. I play on 4 personally. You can go to 3, but I prefer 4. Um, next, let's go into the gameplay. This is where things get important. Again, so you have aim assist on. Don't play with aim assist off if you're playing a controller. Um, ADS plus melee to mount. I don't really mount in this game, though. Um, weapon mount, movement exit on, depleted ammo switch on, blind fire on. I've never used it. This is important. This is important. The automatic airborne mantle for slide canceling. Use if you'd like to automatically mantle when an airborne movement. So basically, you need this on parcel because you don't want to be mantling things whenever you're trying to slide cancel in this game. It's obviously circle, circle, X to slide cancel if you're on default. Um, you don't want to be mantling things. Put this on partial. Basically, what partial does is if you're ever trying to mantle something, you're going to have to double tap. So they actually had this uh, setting in Cold War as well. Um, I played with it on for a little bit to double tap when you want to mantle just so I didn't auto mantle things all the time when I was in gunfights So make sure this on partial. It'll help your slide canceling a lot I don't know exactly what the science science is behind it, but it does help a lot So make sure you have partial off off Just trust me, bro. It, it will help you out a lot with your slide canceling. So automatic sprint a lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to be playing with ATS on. When people ask what ATS is, automatic tactical sprint. So if you ever have automatic, if you ever have tack sprint, it'll basically, if you just move forward, you don't have to press down. It'll just automatically get you running. I have that off. I mean, as a professional, uh, there's, you know, we're not allowed to use it. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's it. Uh, this one's important as well. Slide behavior. Make sure you're on tap. Sure, a lot of you guys already have this already you don't want to have to slide to or you don't want to have to hold to slide you won't be able to slide cancel uh make sure you have that on tap and i'm pretty sure those are the only important ones i mean you guys can take a look at the rest of my settings i don't think i've even changed them um but yeah those are my settings um i hope this helped you guys out i hope that obviously this you know helps you guys with Anything you were struggling on. Sorry for all my mouse and keyboard users. I don't really change those. Um, but those are my settings. So I hope that this helped you guys out a little bit with your settings. I hope that if you didn't learn anything, I hope you learned at least one thing from this video that can benefit you uh, in your Vanguard conquest. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like. I know this wasn't really like a crazy video. Just going over some settings with you guys. But I hope that it helped. Uh, at least a couple of people out there because I know a lot of people have been asking me about settings. But thank you guys. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below uh, if I had anything messed up. I don't think that I did. Um, but yeah, it would help out a lot. So thank you guys. And as always, this is your boy, Scooby. Bye.